This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. If you grew up during the social media era, you've probably had quite a few moments from your childhood shared on the internet. Between cute baby photos or posts commemorating special events like birthdays and graduations, many children, teens, and young adults have had their lives chronicled on social media. Experts like Leah Plunkett, author of Sharonhood, Why We Should Think Before We Talk About Our Kids Online, and faculty at Harvard Law School have dubbed this phenomenon sharenting. Sharenting refers to all the ways that parents, as well as other trusted adults, transmit children's private information digitally. Using those definitions, really any parent online is sharenting to some degree. But when does it become a problem? While most families only share private moments with a close circle of family and friends, some have chosen to make these more public. Right now, some of the most popular yet controversial accounts on social media are family influencers. These families make a living by documenting their daily life, particularly their children, through YouTube videos, TikToks, and Instagram posts. One former family influencer, Grant Konbalanov, says he got into the business after videos of his children unexpectedly went viral on TikTok. I started to post on TikTok a little bit before the pandemic, I want to say like a year before. And, you know, I was able to get up to like 80 or 90,000 followers. And then I made a video with my daughter. It was just, I was having her repeat, like, I will never have a boyfriend. And she screamed like, no, at the end. And it blew up and got like millions of views. And I made a video with my son and it got millions of views. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we should start doing this. Why not, you know, like explore this new avenue Almost overnight, Konbalanov's TikTok account climbed to 3.3 million followers. Quickly, money started flowing in from the platform and brand deals. The family started getting invites to new places and experiences and would even get stopped on the street by excited viewers. But while there were many perks to their newfound fame, Konbalanov couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I kind of started to notice we would go on a trip, let's say, to like Disney. And I would not want to gather any content in Disney just because like I want our kids to have fun and enjoy it. But every time that I would just want to like take a picture or a video just for like memories, I would notice that they would try to like put on an act that they would know would like resonate with people. And that's when I was like, this needs to stop. Our kids are not here to please others. You know, they're our kids and our, it's our job to protect them. The experience forced him to listen to what people were saying and rethink his online presence. Though social media brought his family money and fame, he realized nothing was worth sacrificing the happiness of his children. It didn't take a lot of thought at all, you know, and you would think something that's like bringing in pretty much what someone's full-time job brings in from a 30-second video. It would be a hard decision, but it was not a hard decision. At all. You know, I said, let me sleep on it, woke up in the morning and just started privating videos and never posted them after that. In the two years since this decision, he's lost hundreds of thousands of followers, along with several sponsorships and brand deals. Though his choice was unpopular at the time, since then, many popular family creators have followed in his footsteps. More and more are refusing to share their kids' faces online, with some removing them from their content completely. Rarely, but still significantly, children can be the victim of criminal, illegal, dangerous acts by people who figure out who they are and where they live in real life and engage in criminal, illegal, or threatening behavior. Children may also experience 
personal and emotional and psychological and relational distress at having their story told to the world before they're ready to tell it and in a way and to an audience that they might not have picked. Last but certainly not least, children may experience decisions or predictions being made about them by stakeholders who learn things or think they learn things about them from their online personas that may not be true. Though all children online, not just influencers, can have these things happen to them, kids with a public presence are more at risk. A recent report by the New York Times found that many of these family and child influencer accounts, primarily the ones featuring young girls, had large followings of adult men. Reporters looked at the posts and found a small but alarming number of inappropriate comments. To make matters worse, the rapid explosion of AI can turn a completely innocent photo or video into something different entirely. I am including a child's face, a child's voice, everything about a child in this is even more vulnerable than it was a year and a half ago, a year ago, six months ago. And I would really, really encourage parents, grandparents, and other trusted adults to really go as minimalist with the sharenting as possible, especially during this new AI era, and especially during a time where we have yet to see comprehensive ethical and practical privacy, security, and related legal reforms around AI. With so many negative effects, why are families still pursuing influencing and internet fame? Well, most parents make more money from brand deals than a typical nine to five. It also allows one or both parents to stay at home with the kids while simultaneously earning an income. But while it's clear that family influencing is a lucrative business, who's getting all the cash? Though the kids are usually the stars, until recently there weren't any protections ensuring that these profits were set aside for them. Illinois will become the first state in the country to have a new ethical, practical child labor law that protects child influencers become effective later this summer, July 2024. And in the Illinois law, if a family influencer business reaches a certain level of financial compensation and draws on a certain amount of content involving a child, then there are financial requirements that are based on California's longstanding Coogan Law, where a percentage of the earnings have to be kept in trust for the child until they reach the age of majority. This episode is brought to you by Snapple. Welcome to the Snapple Market Auditory Experience. Close your eyes. Imagine you're walking into your neighborhood store. You make your way to the back and reach for your favorite Snapple flavor. You can't wait. You take a sip. Whoa, that's a lot of flavor. Mmm. What flavor are you holding? Now, open your eyes and check out Snapple.com to find ridiculously flavorful Snapple near you. Bills similar to the Illinois law are moving through state legislatures across the country. And though this is a huge step towards protecting child influencers, it can't undo the damage of growing up with an online presence. We know that children and teens who grow up in households that are running child or family influencer operations as family businesses are experiencing some of the same challenges and also at times opportunities that child entertainers who hit it big or who aspire to hit it big have long faced, which can be feelings of real exposure and betrayal and anxiety upon getting older and seeing just how much of their lives were recorded. And we are hearing more now that some of the children and teens who were part of the initial wave of influencer families are getting older and talking more about their experiences, that those consequences can be really devastating and very long lasting. One of these former child influencers is Cam Barrett, one of the most vocal advocates against sharenting. From a young age, Cam's mother documented private moments, such as her first menstrual period and a teenage car accident on her public Facebook account. Even though her mom didn't have the following that some of these influencers do today, it caused Barrett great anxiety and stress that her friends, classmates, and peers knew such personal details. 
As a result, Barrett and her mom now have a strained relationship. Once something is shared digitally, especially in the form of a social media post, even if it's set to private, you really do lose control of where it goes and what is done with it now and pretty much in perpetuity. So I would really encourage parents to ask themselves, do I need to say this digitally? Right. If I'm just trying to stay in touch with old friends, maybe I send this as a text message via a secure messaging app to people that I can verify are actually the people who are going to have it. And Konbalinov agrees. Even though he took his kids off social media a long time ago, it still upsets him that their private information is out on the Internet. He urges parents to keep kids off social media until they're old enough to fully grasp what they're getting themselves into. To find out more about Leah Plunkett, Grant Konbalanov, and all of our featured guests, visit viewpointsradio.org. For more behind the scenes, check out Viewpoints Radio on X, Facebook, and Instagram. This segment was written and produced by our associate producer, Grace Galanti. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. Our studio manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Radio Health Journal podcast gives listeners the latest news on what's trending in health, science, technology, and more. Why are certain providers and medical doctors not listening to family members who have lived through a disease path for such a long time? Featuring medical experts who break down complex topics in a way that's easy to understand. Radio Health Journal podcast, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts and at radiohealthjournal.org.